Welcome, this is a harmonic minor scale guitar lesson specifically about how to go about mapping out and learning and really internalizing all five of the scale forms and the positions of the harmonic minor scale on the guitar. This lesson is part of a series of videos where I've talked about mapping out and working on the five positions, all the forms of several different scale types so we can play them in any key, so we can play them all over the guitar. I've done a bunch of them, major scale, natural, minor, pentatonic scales, blue scales, and this is on the harmonic minor scale. And again, we want to learn how to play this anywhere on the neck by using the five scale positions, and then therefore we can play it anywhere in any key. And I have a way of working on this that I've been walking through with all these scale types, something that I call the root to root method, that if you're unfamiliar with really how to see these scale forms with the harmonic minor scale on the guitar, then I highly recommend working on it in this way. I was playing guitar for more uh, more than 10 years, 15, 15 years probably, before I really mapped out the harmonic minor scale in the way that I'm gonna show you. And I just think this this thing that I'm gonna show you is very simple. It's It's highlighting the root in a specific way. And for me, it was the thing that did the trick. And now I can see very clearly in any key with every scale form. So let's dive in and talk about how this works. <laughs> First, I thought it'd be good to just talk about the theory of the harmonic minor scale, just the structure of it and how I would spell it out with numbers. Everything is basically related to the major scale. So the major scale is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. If we play that on C along the fifth string, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to one, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And that's really the basis of all theory. It's gonna help us out with anything we learn. So the three and the four are half step apart and the seven and one are half step apart and everything else is a whole step apart. So if we think of that major scale as our starting point, um, then we can alter it by changing two notes. If we flat the three and we flat the six, one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, and keep the seven as it was, there we have it. That's the harmonic minor scale. I really like mapping out scales along one string like this because it's so linear, it's so straightforward, it's so basic. And then we can talk about and work on crossing strings and all the different scale forms and scale positions. But if we know all that stuff physically, but we don't really understand how to just play it along one string, I think that that's problematic. So this is very similar to it, how you might think of it if you're singing it, right? Listening for a whole step up, for a half step up, for a whole step up, and kind of making sure we really feel that structure of it. So alternatively, and probably often the way that this would be uh, expected Explained, instead of relating it to the major scale, we'd relate it to the natural minor scale. Sometimes I'll start with the major scale because that's just such basic knowledge that we want to have down. But I would say, after you know the major scale structure, knowing the natural minor scale structure on its own, don't think of it as the mode of major scale or, or you know, off the six or whatever. If you do that, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I mean by that, don't worry about it. Um, but there, there's a way that they're related that sometimes people will think of. But I want you to think of the natural minor scale and harmonic minor, minor scale on any scale and really any mode totally as its own thing, right? Totally independent of what scale it might be related to. So natural minor scale is one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one, one, flat seven, flat six, five, four, flat three, two, one. Flat seven is down here, one. Okay, so if we know the natural minor scale that well, we want to know that just as well as the major scale. Now all we have to do is raise the seven. One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, raise the seven, one, okay? This is fun, I mean, even for experienced players, well, for myself, you know, doing doing stuff like this that's basic and simple and just kind of listening to it and kind of reviewing some um, structural theory stuff along one string or, you know, I love going back to the basics and the fundamentals. It's, it's so grounding. And from there kind of warming up into whatever, you know, something that we're maybe working on that's more advanced or something. So um, I always like to start with this kind of stuff. Okay, so now you understand the theory structure of it along one string. Let's go ahead and just check out all five of the scale forms. This often, this scale, system people often say comes from the caged system i don't necessarily think of it that way but we have five scale forms and this allows us to play in any position on the neck all over the guitar the ones you see on the screen right now are written with the root as c but if you just move that somewhere else you can play it off of any root and therefore any harmonic minor scale so 
These are the five shapes, positions, forms. They're called all of those things. These these uh, scale patterns they're called sometimes too. We want to know these really well. And the way we want to practice them is by honing in on the root. So usually with this kind of scale form, like this first one on the sheet here, we would see this and practice it with the lowest note to the highest note and just practice up and down. That's great practice. Um, but it doesn't show us what's happening within the scale if we're not aware of that already, right? We don't know where where are the roots of that scale, not to mention where are where is the flat three or where's the five or where are these other things. So the way that I want you to practice all of these, if you haven't done this before, is by starting on the lowest root. This is what I call the root to root method or the root to root exercise that I do with every scale, every mode. I do it in all kinds of keys and stuff like that. And I always come back to this, even after I feel like I know it really well, to kind of refresh and it gets my um, kind of perspective back on exactly where I need to be with the scale. So we want to start on the lowest root and then we want to play up. When we get to another root, you always want to repeat any root that you hit, right? I like to pause a little bit and keep it in time. So it's like, so every time you get to a root, you repeat that root and you can pause a little bit and repeat that root. You don't have to pause. Some people do it like this. That's kind of cool too. So we want to repeat every root. We don't want to repeat any other notes, right? So don't pause or repeat on the highest note of the form unless it happens to be the root. And then what you want to do is make sure you play the entire scale form. So when you get back to this root, you repeat it, go below, bounce off that edge and get back to the root. So this gets us the actual sound of the harmonic minor scale off the root. Now, if we're working on modes of it or something like that, that's a different story, but we wanna kind of get this really down. And then there's also this sound. I mean, it's good for the ears. We can just forget to listen sometimes, but now we have this sense of when it gets to the root. So that's how it works. And we wanna do that off every form. So here's the next, scale position. Okay, here's the next one. Okay, there's two more. This one is the one uh, where the, the lowest root is on the fourth string. This is the one that is usually less familiar because we're used to thinking off the sixth string or the fifth string with all kinds of chords and scale forms and stuff like that. So this will finally highlight this one for a lot of us. And I love that too. It almost gets down to the root. One, seven, flat six, five, four, flat three, two, and then one is right here. And your ear might even wanna go to that. But according to this exercise, we're sticking with that scale form. I think that's the kind of thing that, that, that's the kind of control over it that allows us to really know it and understand it well. And remember kind of what is happening in each scale form. Um, this one also with the harmonic minor scale has this, this particular scale form. One, uh, if we're using our fingers here, one, the finger numbers, I mean, one, three, four, one, three, four, and then you gotta go three, four again. And so that is just ergonomically kind of tricky. Let's do the last scale form here. Okay, so we really have the sound of the actual scale with the roots kind of mapped out. Um, I think it makes all the difference in the world. So give it a try for yourself. Um, I think a lot of us have played guitar for a long time. And, you know, if harmonic minor scale is not really in our area of interest in terms of just the sound or the genres that we like, totally fine. If it is though, this is if, if it's something we wanna know, I think this makes all the difference in the world. So once you do that, it should be easier to do it in other keys. And I highly recommend that you do explore that exact same thing in other keys. So because of that, you know, if I wanted to think of it uh, E flat harmonic minor, I can see that shape really clearly. Not to mention that we eventually want to kind of play all over the neck and connect these scale forms and not necessarily feel stuck within them. 
I think it's all part of that process. Another thing that I recommend as you're working on the scales is to work on melodic patterns. So a melodic pattern is just breaking up the scale in some kind of way that's not just um, strictly in order uh, linear scalar, right? So the common pattern that I usually recommend is a melodic thirds where you go up a note and uh, skip up a note and then come back down, skip up, come back down, um, down, skip up, down one, skip up, down one. So it's going up a third each time. Um, if we start on one, up a third off one, up a third off two, up a third off three, etc. So this creates um, a different kind of perspective and view on the scale, the more melodic patterns that we do. When we only play every note in order, it's something that I call the maze view because you just turn a corner and you say, I can go that way. You know, I know I know the next note, that's it. And our ears get used to that and our hands get used to that and our kind of visual sense of the fretboard gets used to that. So when we are forced to do, when we're forced to jump to a note, we get a little more of what I call in contrast, the map view where we're looking kind of bird's eye view. Can you see every spot and jump to it, right? So the ultimate kind of map view is can, can we jump around to notes that are all in the scale knowing kind of where we are. That's not an exercise I'm saying to do as much as just creating uh, scale patterns that force us to start seeing that. So you got to skip around a little bit. That's another type of scale pattern where you just do different orders of notes. So scale patterns are huge. I have a free download of what I think are the top three scale patterns specifically for the pentatonic scale. And that kind of skipping uh, up a note and then coming down one is on there for the pentatonic scale. And two of those patterns out of the three can be used on any any scale form, any, any scale type, and I recommend that you do that. So there's a link in the description to download that little exercise sheet if you're interested in having something to practice along with. So what it really is the usefulness of the harmonic minor scale? If you're interested in this, you probably already have kind of a reason for it. And there's all kinds of reasons, and one of them is just like, hey, let's, let's learn music, let's learn the guitar, let's learn all these scale types and stuff. But some genres will use them more than others, um, like metal will have kind of a harmonic minor sound. Um, very explicitly sometimes and then in jazz it's very common as well and so I wanted to bring this up in terms of jazz theory and jazz guitar that one of the modes of the harmonic minor scale is actually one of the most useful scales out there period I, sometimes I think of it as even the next most important scale after learning the major scale because in jazz music in particular but but really just any song that has a minor key and uses the five chord as a dominant seventh chord or as a major chord, um, which is tons of music, I mean, tons of music, the scale that that comes from, if we're playing in C minor and then this is the flat six chord of C minor. I did a, I did a video on the chords of the minor scale a while ago. Check that out. It, there'll be a link in the description. But the five chord there, C minor, and then G7. And then they're kind of extensions you can add to that. But C minor, G7. When it goes to the five chord like that, the scale that it's borrowing from for a second is C harmonic minor, but with G as the root. So this is a mode of harmonic minor and it's called Phrygian dominant. And I'll do a video kind of more on this later, but I just wanted to point that out that this is why this scale is incredibly useful, even if we're just playing in C minor. Let's say it's just like even kind of a singer-songwriter song. We're doing C minor to F minor. And if you were improvising or writing something, so let's do that progression. And then it goes to G7. Sounds familiar, right? During that moment. Kind of outline the G7 chord among the harmonic minor scale there. You can hear how that is the appropriate sound, right? During that moment there. So I just wanted to bring that up that that's one of the really, really important use, uses of harmonic minor scale, think, using it when there is a dominant seventh chord as the five chord 
of any minor key, any minor progression. So I say jazz just because it's so common and that's kind of my background in playing. You know, minor two, five progressions or minor two, five, one progressions are all over the place in every, uh, I mean, standards all, um, all the time. You have minor two, five, one. So during that moment of the dominant seventh chord, harmonic minor is definitely one of the scale choices that sounds very correct, very natural, very good to our ears. If you're working off a lead sheet or just looking up chords and you ever see a uh, dominant seventh chord that says flat nine or flat 13, like C7 flat 13 or F7 flat nine, that means that it is that dominant seventh chord coming from the harmonic minor scale. It means it's the fifth chord of harmonic minor. So that's another thing to just look out for. And that's another reason why the harmonic minor scale is useful. Tricky to start applying. I mean, it's not just once we know that, it still takes a lot of work to get it feeling natural, to get it feeling good, to get it sounding melodic, but it's nice to know that it really is quite useful once we start getting used to it. So the point of this video being first step is map them out in this way with the root to root method. Again, if you want a little more scale practice, I have an awesome exercise sheet that is called the top three pentatonic scale guitar patterns for more melodic soloing. And so this idea of doing melodic patterns uh, is, what I think is one of the secrets to getting our solos sounding less just like scales when we practice scales and kind of breaking them up a little more. There are other elements that are important for soloing too that I will talk about in the future. So make sure you're subscribed, like phrasing, like feel, stuff like that. But as far as note selection goes, breaking up scales with melodic patterns is huge. So that PDF download, there's a link in the description to grab that. Um, and it's super fun stuff to practice. Nice to have just a little sheet in front of us when we're practicing sometimes. So grab it if you want to. That's it for this lesson. The next lesson in this series, which may or may not be the next video I put out, uh, but the next one that I put out that's gonna be connected to the series is going to be on the melodic minor scale. So that gets a little more weird and a little more complex, a little more jazz um, appropriate as well. And so that's gonna be a fun lesson. Hope to see you there in the future. I put out lessons every Tuesday. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell if you want more. Thanks so much. Take care.